What's up, my friends? This is Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. Our guest today needs no introduction. Most of you know who he is. You've seen him online. You've seen him marketing. And he's definitely one of the good guys. Uh, as we as we spend time in this industry, just like any industry, uh, you see and and you learn about people. You see people having success. And then as you spend more time around them, you really get to, get to understand uh, who are the people who have uh, good intentions. Who are the people who do it right and still get massive results versus um, the people who just, you know, not particularly that they're bad people, but they just, they, they just, they, they just don't do things right. They just don't have the best integrity or they just don't. And Brian's just not one of those guys. He is one of those dudes who, uh, you know, uh, absolutely values profits, but also values people. And we're going to talk about some of the secrets that he, that float around inside of his head uh, and that he uses inside of his business. Some of the, the principles, the strategies and the philosophies uh, that make his business what it is. So with that being said, B Brewer, what's going on, brother? Hey, what's up, Dave? Thanks for having me on. Hey to everybody who's on here live watching the replay. Um, you just appreciate everyone who's tuning in and, and jumping on with comments and all that stuff. And uh, just happy to be here again, Dave. Thank you. If anybody knows Brian, let's uh, give him a big, huge digital legendary round of applause in the comments. Uh, I know you've you've probably got tons of people who who already know you and follow you, and and you'll you'll have tons more here by the time this is over. Uh, if you guys want to find Brian out on TikTok, you can follow him at Brian Brewer Official, and we'll leave that up for the majority of the uh, of the show. So, you know, it's interesting, man. I was. <laughs> I was, uh, I saw somebody, you know, uh, who had posted something on social media actually this morning when I logged on for a moment and, and basically what it said was, it was a, it was a meme of a bunch of, uh, porta potties on fire. And, and it said, if 2021 was a scented candle, you know, and, and so, <laughs> yeah. So, and, and I, and I said to my wife, I, I said, you know, What's interesting is, is to some people this year uh, is, 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 you know, one of the worst years of their lives. I mean, they're, they're caught up in, in uh, whether it be politics or whether it be all these various topics that are outraging people and that they're spending time on social media fighting with people. Um, may maybe they've not made any changes. The pandemic has not uh, inspired them to make any changes in their job or their financial situation. They're just, they're the same person with the same negative perspective as they were back in 2019 before all of this stuff happened. And, and I said, isn't it interesting, you know, 2021, besides all of the folks who have been affected by uh, illness or financial stress. I, I I have compassion for those folks, but I'm blessed and grateful to have a skill set in a business, and in in that that not only allows us to have a fantastic year and take advantage of all these people coming online, but also gives me an opportunity to spend more time with my family. And and I said. Aren't those two different realities, right? Aren't those two different realities? And um, and I think that so many of us focus on the mechanics, which is just tell me where to click, just tell me, you know, what, just tell me exactly what to do, and it get, if it can be done for me, then that's fine. But but don't want to work on this piece, you know, this six cubic square inch space that sits on top of our shoulders. Um, that essentially is the software that runs everything. And we'll talk about some strategies, but I wonder just to kick this off, what, what is, if, if you were to say the, the, one of the, the most useful mindset tips or perspectives that you use and that you have, or that you've developed over the years to use in your business, what, what do you think one of those might be? Yeah, so mindset is 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 interesting and um, gets talked about a lot from a from a buzzworthy standpoint, but I don't think people end up diving into it like they really should. Um, 
you know, there is some benefit, I think, in the, hey, tell me where to click, tell me what to do in the very beginning. For instance, pre-written email swipes. If we can provide those for an absolute beginner that help facilitate the conversions on a specific product, that's great. Sometimes that's the head start that people need. But where um, we run into issues, I think, as, as folks trying to become better entrepreneurs and trying to make more money and trying to be more successful is what happens after the fact. When we have to start thinking to ourselves, thinking for ourselves, when we have to start solving problems on our own. And that's where mindset, you know, really, really, really comes into play. And when you talk about things like the pandemic, and I don't know if I can say that without getting a shut off. So I probably just screwed this whole thing up. Sorry about that. But anyways, the point I'm getting at it is, you know, yeah, you can look at the dumpster fires or the, you know, the, the outhouse fires and, and focus on that. But we have to remember that where, you know, where we focus is where the, our energy goes. So we, we really have to focus on, on what we can control and what we can do and the opportunities and, and really who we can help and who we can serve. So that's the first thing. Service has always been, you know, in the forefront of my mind, at least since I've started seeing consistent success. Maybe before I started seeing consistent success, I was more focused on the money. But beyond that, um, you know, I guess the the reason we don't we don't focus on our mindset as much is because that's not as exciting. Like when we launch a funnel, we can physically see that. And when we start driving traffic to it and start generating leads, we can physically see that. And when we get that first commission or that first thousand dollar day or that first thirty thousand dollar month or whatever our next goal is, that's amazing. That's tangible. That gets us excited. Um, you know, the mental stuff, that's kind of the boring stuff. And, uh, you know, as I said to you just a moment before we got started, you know, sometimes, you know, you got to you got to remember that boring pays the bills in, in a lot of ways. And you did say that to me before I said, Brian, I said, I, I want to twist your arm today and I want you to spill some of your secrets. And he said, well, you know, he said, uh, well, one of my secrets is that boring pays the bills. And I said, well, will you explain that to us on the show? So tell tell everybody, including myself, what you mean by that. Yeah, absolutely. So. First of all, let me preface this with a big, important, hold on just a second, disregard everything I just said, because as marketers, we can't be boring. Um, it's just not going to work. We need to use those exciting hooks to get the attention, to stop, stop the scroll, to, to get people to click on our ads so we can then have an opportunity to relay our message and get people to, to, to start to consider our messaging, which is all comes into, into account when we're building congruent affiliate marketing campaigns. So we can't be boring. But when I think of boring pays the bills, what I think about is the movie Rounders. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Rounders, Dave. It's with no. Matt Damon and uh, uh, Edward Norton. And it's it's probably an old movie. I'm probably dating myself. But let's say it's 15, 20 years old now. And it's about card players. They're, they're poker players, right? And, um, you know, Matt Damon, he's one of those guys. He's like, I'm out there and I'm going to play big. And I, I've got $30,000, which he calls three stacks of high society. I'm going to push it all in and go against the mad Russian and, and see if I can't double up or triple up or, you know, see if I can put him on tilt. And, and guess what happens? He gets wiped out. Well, who does he call? Well, he calls his friend Kanish and, you know, he says, man, I need some help. I need some money. I need to be restaked because I'm wiped out. I got to get back in the game. And uh, basically to paraphrase, you know, he, his friend gives him this story. Like, hey, guess what? You know what? I'm a grinder. You know, I, I go up there. I do the work every day. I sit down at the poker table for five hours a day or three hours a day or whatever time I have. And I don't bet big, but I win and I grind. And guess what? My kids eat. And so that's kind of the the the, the reality of the situation is, yeah, there, there's excitement. There's awesome things that happen when you make your first thousand dollar commission or your first two thousand dollar commission. Um, and you want to go attack that. And when you see the opportunity for momentum, that's when you have to step on the gas. You absolutely have to step on the gas once you start to see a little bit of momentum. But it's the boring things. It's the posting daily on TikTok. It's the checking your emails and see who reached out. It's the, oh boy, I haven't gone viral in a week. Maybe instead of just doing the same old thing, maybe I strategically test four different hooks and see what see what's working right now. Um, yeah, boy, it's the weekend, but you know, I can spend five minutes to create a post in my Facebook group or check in to see how everyone's doing. You know, those are the boring things that absolutely have to be done uh, day in and day out. And like I said, it can take two minutes, it could take five minutes, but they have to be done consistently over and over and over again. And that's how you start to see the compound effect. That's when things start to happen because that one check-in on that email, that one response to that one email might net you a $1,000 commission or $2,000 commission because people just yeah. wanted to check in and see, hey, is, is this legit? Is somebody going to respond to me or am I going to be left 
hung out to dry. So, yeah, you know, that's kind of the whole whole mentality that I think gets lost on us exciting marketers from time to time. I agree. And it's it it also can be um, there's two things that, that specifically came up for me uh, when I was getting clean uh, in 2008. The thought of of um, doing the daily necessities and rituals in order to do proper self care to take care of myself to get clean and sober to, for the rest of my life were overwhelming. And what I was told was, well, Dave, just do it just for today. You know, and that was like something that was was I could grasp. Right. I was like, mm -hmm. OK. And, and oh, by the way, I don't even know if I'm going to still want to be clean and sober tomorrow or next week or next New Year's Eve. So they said, don't worry about that. Just focus on today. And that's probably one of the hardest concepts, although it sounds simple, the hardest concepts I've ever wrapped my head around because it's it's not about the getting overwhelmed with go, going uh, and doing TikTok videos or going live every day at 10 a.m. with somebody for 30 to 60 minutes. It's not about thinking about doing that for the rest of my life. Oh my gosh, how am I ever going to go on vacation? How am I ever going to get a break? Am I real? Oh my God, how are mm -hmm. we ever going to find that many people? I mean, when I first, when we first started doing this, it was like, are we going to have that many people? <laughs> right. Panic city as, sets in, right? <laughs> then as we, we, as then as we started reaching out, we're like, holy crap, we got waiting lists, you know, a month long, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that came up for me just because of my own experience. Get, get just focusing on the activities that I have to do today, the grind, the, the boring, whatever, right? Because it's not always exciting. You know, it's not always like every day isn't the first day. You know, the first day of any job is exciting. And then you're 30 days in and you start to get to know your boss and the person you sit next to and they all look like goblins and smell like fish. You know, you hate them all. Uh, but you were just excited about it uh, three, you know, 30 days ago. The other thing um, that, uh, you know, that sort of came up for me um, was that um, that I think that um, we are truly as entrepreneurs specifically understanding our brain chemistry is really important. And the dopamine and the adrenaline and the serotonin and all of these exciting, these chemicals that make us feel excited and happy and, and in love and all this kind of stuff um, all go off at the beginning of anything, the beginning of a relationship, the beginning of a business, the beginning of buying a new course. And that's why so often we see people get so excited buying something and then don't even log in because just the simple act of purchasing can be addicting, you know, because it's the start of something new. It's like open. It's like getting a package to am from Amazon, and so recognizing that our brain is set up like that, that our body is set up like that to fire off those chemicals at the beginning, and that is going to wean down in 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 decrease. That, and we have to find ways to get excited, to reignite the passion, and also to, to operate in maintenance mode versus always in startup mode. And I think what many entrepreneurs do, Brian, is they start up really exciting, boom, 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 gets boring, self-sabotage, quit, stop, right before the miracle happens. And then going along, going along, okay, starting something new. Yes, this is really exciting, you know, and then maintenance mode kicks in and it's like, well, that's boring. Boom. Stop. Does that make sense to you? Do you agree with that? I mean, that makes a hundred percent sense. And that's exactly what this whole game is all about. You know, I had the, uh, the opportunity a couple weeks ago, I was, I attended the, uh, click funnels, funnel hacking live. Mm -hmm. Um, Part of the reason I was there was I'll show this off as inspiration, not bragging, but I got to get this dream car award trophy, which was really cool. Humble brag, uh, hashtag humble brag, humble. Yeah, brag. Exactly. So you get those when you refer <laughs> enough people to click funnels, which produces a nice passive income stream there. Um, but but the reason I wanted to bring that that particular event up is because the keynote speaker, the person who finished that off, was Tony Robbins. And given the world and the, in the state it is right now and, and people a little hesitant to be in crowds and all the logistics that come in 
uh, to play when you're setting up an event like that. The bottom line is Tony Robbins doesn't perform or speak live, um, you know, as much as he used to. So I thought it was a tremendous honor and, and the ability to see him and the opportunity to see him was huge. And, you know, kind of to talk about to the mindset thing and everything you just covered, you know, he, a lot of what he talked about was, was knowing your why, you know, um, why do you want to do this? Because like you said, in the beginning, it's going to be exciting when you buy that course or you invest for the first time or you launch a new funnel, right? Like that, that feels like progress and that feels exciting and that hits the dopamine and it's like, here we go. But, but that's going to fade. Like you just said, it's going to wean. And that's when people self-sabotage. Well, if you know your why, you know, why do you want to do this? It's not because of the money. What does the money provide? Or, or maybe you, you, you want to truly help people and realize that the more you give, the more you get or whatever your why is, you know, if you want a bigger house or whatever it is, that's what you have to keep uh, you know, focused on. And, uh, you know, and, and that's, and that's really where we as entrepreneurs and, and, and I didn't invent this, this is coming from, from great people. Like you have to get out of your head and you have to get into your heart. And that's, and that's where, where your why comes from. It comes from your heart. And the, the coolest thing I heard Tony Robbins say is think about this. When, when someone's pregnant, when someone's going to have a baby, you know, how do you, how do you determine if they're, you know, if they're pregnant with the exception of chemicals tests where you pee on a stick, what do you just, you look for the heartbeat, right? So the heartbeat, starts before the brain. That's how we determine life. Even from the youngest, eight weeks, nine weeks old, we're, we're looking for a heartbeat. And so if we can focus on more in our heart and get out of our head, which is Tony Robbins says, if you're in your head, you're dead, get into the heart, know the why, that's when we're going to be able to overcome those dopamine drop-offs and we're going to be able to stay focused, continue moving forward. And um, you know, another thing that you said that was interesting was you talk about day one. One of the most successful companies that that I can think of right now is obviously Tesla and Elon Musk, but I also think of Amazon. If I'm not mistaken, Amazon's uh, mantra or mentality is it's always day one, and 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 to me that like got to keep the excitement. We got to go out there and decide how are we going to build something great today, even if it's 90 days down the road, 120 days down the road. What are we going to do today that we can we can build something great? Yeah. And uh, you know, just to 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 follow up on the first thought you had. Um, you know, you talk about, uh, you know, this show, right? Like when you wanted to do this show, like, okay, ooh, all those things I got to do, how are we going to get all these guests? How are we going to, how are we going to keep this up? How am I going to go on vacation? Well, all that is, you know, is, is just fear manifesting mm -hmm. itself in some sort of, of, of tangible way where we can see it. And that, you know, that's, that's everything. If you feel like you have imposter syndrome, if you feel like, uh, you can't do it if you're afraid to go on camera, if you think you're you're not pretty enough to go on camera, or handsome enough to go on camera, or you don't think nobody's going to pay attention. All it comes down to is fear. That's all it is, is fear holding you back. And, and just an example of this show, you go live, you have a little bit of faith, you jump in, you do what you know can help the business grow. And guess what? Like you said, here you are, you know, 30 day waiting list to get on. I know you contacted me about a month ago to get on this show. So I know that's legit. I know it's a 30 day waiting list to get on. So that's incredible. And, uh, you know, I know that was kind of all over the place, but I just wanted to respond yeah, no, correctly what great. you said, because it, it was, uh, I mean, this mindset thing, you know, as we started talking about, uh, you know, it's so important to, to really focus on. Well, I wonder how many of you can relate to that, you know, who are listening, how many of you are great at starting things, but, but, you know, not so great at finishing them. Um, how many of you can identify that you get really excited at the beginning of businesses or relationships, but you know, you, you sort of that excitement wears off and you, you go moving into maintenance mode of either a relationship or a business is something that isn't as it, it, it isn't, it isn't particularly your sweet spot or where you're comfortable at. You know, and um, the reason why this came up for me is because I, I was literally just talking with um, with one of my my coaches yesterday and and uh, we were talking about that exact thing. You know, um, I, I uh, we were talking about the, the the transition from startup mode to maintenance mode and startup mode could literally be one, two years. You know, it could be three years. Um, but going into maintenance mode, uh, where where things are are somewhat uh, stable, or to where you've been doing things for a specific amount of time, and you you feel like you know what I, I I'm having a hard time getting to the next level or whatever. Um, 
and and I feel like I'm sort of stagnant or or uh, you know you could use many things to describe it, but you know it's it's I just I just I see this as being such a common thing with with entrepreneurs and it ties in perfectly with the with the boring the boring pays the the bore and, and, and I, I like the distinction between that doesn't mean we want to be boring in our marketing, but we want to embrace the boring activities. And I also think it's easier as you get older to do that too, right? It's like it's like um, the 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 older we get, the for me, the more routine and structure is important. And and back some years ago, Brian, I don't know about you, but I was a free spirit. I didn't want any structure. I didn't want any calendar. I didn't want any commitment. I didn't want anybody telling me where I needed to be, and I didn't want to have to be anywhere at a specific time. And as I became an entrepreneur, that became even more of a, of a, of a, of a, like a belief system about who I was and who my identity. And that started to cause problems for me, it started to cause problems in my business. And it started to cause problems in my marriage because I, I'm, ha I've got kids now and I'm, dinner's at a specific time. And when dad strolls in 20 minutes late or 30 minutes late or whatever, because he was working and he was having, he was in flow state or whatever. Right. I mean, we can sit here and say that, Oh, you know, your wife or your spouse needs to support you, but that's not real life. They do support you. But mm -hmm. being a member of a family is, is something that I had to grow up and learn how to do, especially with kids and in being in a business in learning that, creating specific structure and, and, and oftentimes creating boundaries like, Hey, I'm working right now and no, I can't come and meet you, pick you up. No, I can't come and go to the grocery store with you right now. Whatever it is, I needed to either get help with structure and get help with routine, which I did in many, many ways for my wife. And I also needed to learn how to set boundaries with my time and respect my time more. See, be having structure and boundaries and working on a calendar, working it. I learned that that was ways that I could respect myself and respect my time. And by saying no to other people who wanted me to be on their agenda versus what I was doing or wanted me to come out and socialize versus what was really a priority. Um, by saying no and setting those boundaries, that was respecting myself and it was respecting my family and it was respecting my why. Did you go through that process at all or are you, do you still have that come up as uh, uh, something that you're working on regularly? How have you embraced structure? Have you embraced structure? And what are some ways that you set boundaries with your calendar and your time to respect your why? You know, I, 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 there's really two things that came up for me and, and I've been through both of them and probably will still continue to still continue to go through uh, uh, them in some degree. Uh, but you talk about, <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't remember the exact word you use, but you talk about, you know, things start going and then you get into this self-sabotage, right? You know, you, because you don't want to do the boring, you feel stagnant, you know, you start looking around and, and, and you know, back in 2018, I thought, I think I talked about this one of the last times I was on this, this uh, wake up legendary show is, is, you know, back in 2018, I successfully blew up a $50,000 a month business because I don't know, I got bored or, or whatever it was, you know what I mean? And, and, and I stopped doing the things uh, that were working, but yeah, as far as, um, you know, that goes you have that experience, dude, you know? What yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like, and and I, I might want to come back to that in a second. I want to interrupt your flow, but I just, I want to make a note of that. Please. Continue. Yeah. We should, we should, we could definitely dive into that. Cause that's, you know, that's something that a lot of people face and, and it's part of the reality. Um, and then, and, and that's the reality of business. You know, it's not like you make it and then all of a sudden, boom, it's done. I made it. Um, I'm never going to struggle again. Uh, so that, you know, that's why even if you're just getting started, you know, I know there's a lot of different people on this call and a lot of different people watching this replay who are going to be in various states of, of starting and growing their business. Uh, but even in the beginning, like when you're first struggling and you're not making any money or you, or you're having a hard time getting your funnel set up or whatever current struggles you have, uh, you know, embrace that because there, you're always going to have the struggles and there's just going to be a different set of struggles. And, and the only thing that happens is the struggles don't don't disappear. It's just the stakes raised, you know, now, okay, now I'm dealing with struggles and all of a sudden I got to 
a thousand dollar a month car payments or you know whatever and then you know four thousand dollar a month mortgage or whatever you know you, as you grow you know your, your expenses are gonna gonna keep pace to some degree um but anyway back to your your time um you know restricting your time or, or scheduling your time you know I, I was the same way too i was like I don't want anybody to tell me what to do and when to do and when to show up. And then when you start making money, it's like, it, 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 it like throws gasoline on the fire. Like, Holy crap. I don't have to listen to anybody anymore. <laughs> right. um, you know, which, which is a whole nother story, which we won't get into. But anyway, uh, the point is, is, is when you get so free spirited and freewheeling and, and this is relevant to people who are just getting started as well. You're just like, I'm just going to roll in and work when I want to. And, and not when I don't, um, you can really fall into the trap of like, like you said, a flow state. It's like, okay, now I'm working. Okay. I'm in that flow state. So since I've set up this freedom or, 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 or whatever, now I'm working from 5 PM when I get home from work until one 30 or two 30 in the morning, which is great. But the next day you're going to be, you're going to be burnt. And now all of a sudden yeah. you're going to be like three days. Like, Oh man, I, I put in a, a, an eight hour day after an eight hour day yesterday. And you know, it, it just kind of wears you out. Whereas what I found is like when I started scheduling, which I was just deathly afraid of, it was like, Oh, well, I really don't have that much to do today. And it started to be like, okay, cool. I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. Guess what? I can get that done in two hours. Then if I want to go to lunch with my wife, I can. You know what I mean? So that scheduling, which which so many of us are so afraid of, actually yeah. is a tool to keep us on track and keep us keep us focused. And, and, and it really increases the efficiency, I believe. You know, one of the things that I did, Brian, is uh, like, and, and that my wife and I did, and I, re I really got to give her a lot of credit for that. Hear that, honey? I'm giving you a lot of credit for this. Um, uh, you know, always got to earn those brownie points. You know what I mean? Got to, gonna, you know, as a marketer, got to let them know all the bonuses and, and let them know how good the offer is. But uh, my marketing business taught me that, you know, always, always announce what you're doing. Uh, so, so they know because mm -hmm. those brownie points matter, they, they add up and then you can cash them in. Um, so, uh, so yeah, man, like we started to do the same thing every week, right? You want to talk about embrace the boring. All right. I want to give, this just came to me because your, your concept, your topic of embrace the boring is probably one of the most powerful things that I've ever done. And this is another way that I did it, Brian, was when we, when we especially had two kids, but even when we only had one little one at home, um, we, uh, we started to run our week the same way every week. So um, on Tuesday, we would have a late night and be able to do whatever we wanted. Friday, the same way. So our nanny would stay late those two days. Um, Every day, nanny would come. We would leave the house at the same time, and we work in a separate, uh, a separate building, a separate home, uh, versus working at home. Yeah, it's just, it's just something that uh, you know we we uh, we love, we love it. We yeah, love it. We we get to, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we get to leave the house and no kids, and all <laughs> that. It's kind of like going to an office, but you just go to another house, right? Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. uh, so. Um, so anyways, eat every week looks the same, right? Every week looks the same. It's not like, what are we doing next week? When are we going to get our own time? When do we have a night for a day? Every week, it's already scheduled, dude. It's mm -hmm. already done. It's it, it, The nanny has a schedule, and it's the same every week. And I can do whatever I want in that time. But for me, I also have a, a problem with, 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 um, telling time and how long are things going to take, you know, so meaning that I don't have a good sense of time, you know, I have a good sense of direction, but I don't have a good sense of time. And it's one of my, my weaknesses, my, my sort of shortcomings. So it's helped me to be able to say, to be able to know what to expect. And then I can put the things that I want to do, whether it's work related, whether it's recovery related, whether it's you know personal development, whether it's social and fun related, I can put them in those places throughout the week and not have to wonder or go months on end without personal time, without going on a date with my wife, without taking care and doing self-care and doing recovery or personal development stuff because it's already scheduled. Right mm -hmm. now, when we go on vacation, that's a totally different story. The other thing is at home with our children, 
we've got a routine to where every day we eat dinner at the same time. We, we give baths at the same time. We go to bed at the same time. So our kids are not up and, you know, going crazy and not knowing what to expect. It, those routines, again, have to give my wife a lot of credit for this. As an entrepreneur, I was so resistant to those for a long time. Those routines have helped me to be more productive and also to <clears throat> spend less energy planning what I'm going to do. It's the same reason why I wear kind of the same outfits every day. It ends up being a good branding strategy, but it's also I don't have to sit in front of the closet for 10 minutes trying to try shit on and figure out what I'm going to wear for that day. It's already done. It's why I drink the same smoothie every morning. It's already done. Mm -hmm. So all of these things that are already scheduled and already picked out and done for me allow me to put more energy and more time into my business. Now, some might say, Dave, that sounds like a boring life. I can assure you it's not. It's actually right. a very relaxing life mm -hmm. because I'm not constantly wonder what I'm going to do today, where I'm going to eat, when I'm going to eat, what, when we're going home, when we're... I don't have to worry about all that stuff because it's already planned. So I'm not saying that's a good fit for everybody, but Brian, that's exactly in alignment with what you were talking about with embracing the boring. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's funny you mentioned that time management thing because it's a big joke in my family. What a Brian five minutes is. Yeah. I'm sitting on the computer in the office dinner. I can hear is getting ready or, or, or we're getting ready to leave to go to whatever. Oh yeah. Five minutes. My wife always chimes in. So you mean 15? I go, maybe nine. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's just kind of maybe something that's similar with entrepreneurs. But um, yeah, you know, you know, when you were talking about this and talking about the structure and, and before you even mentioned the the clothing, it, it, you know, I'm thinking about like the Mark Zuckerbergs and the Steve, you know, the late Steve Jobs of the world who they're pretty much looking the same way every single day. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to reduce the number of decisions that they have to, to make in a day that don't move their business um because i think we only have a certain capacity uh for for decisions in a day and i think we hit a threshold at some point where we've made too many decisions in one day and if, if too many of those are on you know what sort of toothpaste i'm going to use uh what time i'm going to go to the gym what shirt i'm going to wear what i'm going to have for breakfast you know, i eat the same thing for breakfast every day um you know i i i don't buy a ton of clothes i i, I buy nice clothes but i don't buy a ton of them that way i know hey Boom, just kind of go down the road and I know what I'm going to wear, just basically the next one in order. And, and it's not something that I, I set out and said, hey, I need to do this in order to be successful. But as I became more successful, I started thinking, OK, what can I do to improve the efficiency? What can I do uh, to move the needle? So entrepreneurs also always looking to solve problems. How can we can we solve problems? So if you're a beginner and you're watching this and you're like, that's great for you guys. You have systems that are in place and systems that are working. Some people watching this live or watching this replay might think to themselves, Dave, I don't, I don't even, or Dave or Brian, I don't even know, like I've never set up a funnel. So I'm going to dive in there and, and, and I'm not going to know what to do. So here's a little tool that I think anyone can use. Um, if you can't set routines quite yet, because you don't know what the, what the day is going to look like, what you can do, I think, which is helpful is, is in the morning, before you pick up your phone, before you get started, right? Take two minutes, take 30 seconds, take whatever you have to first put yourself in a upper state and not a state of stress because you don't want to make any decisions in a state of stress. What you want to do is put yourself in a proper state where you think about something you're thankful for. You can think of it as a gratitude moment or just, 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 you know, physically, you know, put your hands over your chest and think, oh, I'm thankful for this. And that'll put you in the proper state. Then the next thing you need to do, or you can do is say, Hey, here's the three things that I absolutely need to accomplish today in order to move my business forward. And that could be as simple as, as you know, opening my click funnels account or, they could be as simple as, Hey, deciding which autoresponder I'm going to use, or, you know, it can be as simple as, Hey, I'm going to do, you know, day six of, of the 15 day business builder challenge, or I'm going to meet with my advisor. You know, it can be simple things, but just decide, okay, these are the three things that I'm going to do that are going to move the needle today. Then guess what? Now you're like, okay, cool. When I'm done with that, I'm done. That, that's my reward. Or boy, I'm not going to get distracted and, and I'm not going to have people pull me away. Uh, from what I need to do, because hey, I know these are the three things I have to do. And, and if you if you stack enough three things over time, guess what? Before you know it, you'll be amazed at what you can accomplish. Yeah. And and really in order, because what if you only can, you know, what if something does come up or that first thing takes you longer than expected? 
always start with the most important thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one of the things that I've learned is, is start with the most important thing that you have to do because that, that, I mean, and this is just such a golden boulder. I mean, if, if you folks, what Brian just said, if you take one thing away from this call, it is, that is such a golden nugget, make a list and then put that number one, most important thing at the top and, and, and just focus on that thing first. And if you knock it out, great, you can move on. But if you don't, and it takes longer, you can give yourself the time and you don't have to rush yourself to do it, do it right. And if it, you know, a lot of times we think about it, we, we, we overestimate what we can do in a short period of time and underestimate what we can do in a long period of time and 365 powerful things in a year. If you did 365 major moves over the course of a year, uh, it's so much more than what most people do or accomplish because oftentimes people's list or wish list or to do list never even gets touched or they're just too busy getting ready to get ready and they never even start. So if you start and you accomplish one thing per day, that's 365 accomplished tasks. And that will move the needle in your business so far, so far. It's just, I'm telling you, it is so, it is, it is so underestimated how much that moves the needle to accomplish one big thing per day. So thanks for bringing that up. I wanted to touch on the $50,000 blown up business because mm -hmm. I think your experience in that is so valuable. I, I don't, I'm sure you've told the story before. I don't particularly remember what it, what, how it went down. So I'd love to hear it again. And I'd love for people to uh, just, just learn from your experience of being in this industry and not just all what you do right all the time. I, I want to learn also from some of the mistakes that you've made and some of the things that you, you wouldn't particularly repeat. So tell us about uh, that story. Yeah, I'm glad you touched on that and, and, and circled back to that and made a note of it when it came up, because I think it's it's really super relevant to the situation that a lot of uh, people are probably facing in this group right now or are going to face. So this was, uh, yeah, there's no exact dates on anything. You know, the this you know, a decline kind of gets set in motion before the before the numbers really to reveal themselves. And what I mean by that is, you know, you start to sabotage and, and things go still go pretty well for a while before it mm. really starts coming to come into a head there. So, you know, just to kind of give the short version of it, you know, back in 2016, 2017, um, you know, that's when I went all in on kind of the, 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 the model that uh, I use now for anyone who's fam familiar with my business. Lots of content on YouTube at this time. You know, now I do a lot of YouTube, TikTok, Facebook. But this was with this was back 2016, 2017. I was pretty heavy on YouTube, and it was my first go on YouTube. It was the first time I was putting my my face out there. I before that I was just behind the scenes, product review blogs, making some money, but but nothing really significant. Um, and it was in the e-commerce space, and, and I had done some um, e-commerce and, and drop shipping in, in 2015. So I thought, okay, cool. People really want to know what's going on here. People really are really interested in this. Um, let's start teaching it. I know Shopify has a great affiliate program. Let's you know create some courses and and give them away for free and and, and leverage you know that affiliate program, other affiliate programs. And things were going great, and you know it was the right time for me. Um, you know. E-commerce and drop shipping interest was starting to explode in 2017. There weren't a whole lot of us on YouTube teaching it. And I mean, money was flowing fast and lists were growing quickly and YouTube channels were getting, you know, a hundred subscribers, 200 subscribers, sometimes 1500 subscribers a day. And things were, things were going cool. And, um, you know, by, by this is about November, September, October, November, of 20. 2017 and i was like wow cool I, I can't believe this you know i went from a, a waiter making 50 60 a year and now i just i just crossed fifty thousand dollars in a month and we're talking profit here at this point and uh i was like wow this is amazing so obviously that kept me fueled for a little while but then the you know the boredom started getting to started to set in and it's like okay i'm doing the same thing i don't feel like i'm growing now hey guess what more people are coming to the youtube platform and and, and talking about you know, this drop shipping thing. So it's getting a little diluted. So um, <clears throat> the combination of things happened and, and just to kind of jump forward a little bit, basically I was like, I need to, I need to pivot. 
right? Um, I need to do something different. And in doing so, um, I turned my back on a conversion process that I knew was working. I turned my back on an educated and even more, ever more educated market that was interested in that drop shipping thing. And I, I shifted to something else like, okay, well let's teach email marketing or whatever. I, I mean, that just shows you how bored I was. I just wanted to do anything different. And um, I think the first thing I realized is, is I had all this fanfare and, and stuff because I was helping so many people. And then when I switched topics, nobody followed. It was like, oh, no one gives a shit about me. They give a crap about what they give a crap about, right? You know, and it's like, yeah, they're interested in, in, in drop shipping, not stupid email marketing. And, um, you know, over time, you know, then you can't go back because you burned all your bridges or you cut your ties or you made your grand proclamation of drop shipping's dead or whatever it was. And, 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 you know, over the next year, you know, my business went down just about every month, uh, consistently decrease and decrease and decrease. And, um, a couple of, couple of quick lessons from that. Um, first of all, if you go onto YouTube today, there's still people start talking about drop shipping and e-commerce. So obviously it wasn't dying. Um, so I, I, I probably jumped the gun. Um, you know, I see that a lot now, um, with, with TikTok, you know, it's like, yeah, October, 2020, boy, it was a good time to be around. Um, but if, if you missed it, it doesn't mean it's over. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, TikTok is still a, a great platform to get views, uh, just as YouTube is, just as Facebook is, if you, if you do it the right way. Um, you know, people are still interested in learning affiliate marketing. If that's what you're promoting, you know, it, it's, people are still interested in it. Um, but, uh, you know, another thing that 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 I kind of learned from that is is I, I lost focus on on giving people, helping people in in, in a way they wanted to to be helped, and, and once you lose focus on the customer and, and providing uh, you know value and, and really playing the the game that needs to be played, then 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 all everything. Uh, can fall apart. So if you're if you're in a situation where maybe you've been promoting something for a little while and you had a little bit of success, if you're in that boat and it's starting to go down, guess what? It's not over. We still have con uh, proven conversion processes. The same things that made you money six months ago are still going to work now. You just kind of got to either reignite your spark or tap into your why or something you said, Dave. On I don't even know who you were talking to. It was a random. Wake up legendary call that I, you know, I, I don't have time to be on all of them, but I do step in from time to time. You said something about you don't have to build, uh, you know, I don't know if you said you don't have to build another house if you, if you want to change up, maybe just build a different door to the same house and you know, maybe build a different door to the same offer. And, and I think that's something that could be super helpful uh, for those yeah. who have seen a little bit of success and then, you know, with whatever they're promoting it, it starts to fade a little bit. Okay, like, okay, maybe not find something different to promote that's not validated in the market that doesn't have a proven conversion process that was making you money. Maybe instead just come at it from a different angle, uh, yeah. reignite your passion, reignite the, the passion, curiosity, interest of your existing audience, which will then help bring in more like-minded folks and, and things can, things can be good and exciting again with, without blowing up your whole business. Dude, this is, uh, wow. This is like huge. Um, Matt and I were talking yesterday about some uh, some ads, just going over some ads that we're running, and and uh, you know I we so often when you're running a campaign or doing a specific strategy, whether it's a paid strategy or a free strategy, if you're not quite hitting the numbers that you want to hit, I mean the ten, especially if you're spending money on paid ads, for example, the tendency can be all right, kill it, you, you know, it's not working, right, and. I went through the, the the campaign and the funnel yesterday and the big takeaway, the big change that we saw that we could make that would likely make a significant difference was just changing up the landing page. Just changing the landing page. That was it, you know, to something that 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 is that is. Uh, that has never been seen before, right? That's just brand new, different headline, different color, right? And sometimes it's just that simple. You know, we were getting a 30% opt-in rate on a specific landing page. And I said, I'm pretty confident 
we could double our conversion rate by split testing a different landing page. And, um, and, and what that would do would double the amount of leads that we were getting. And that is a, that's doubling your business in one day. With right? no more ad spend, with no more, no more, no, more spend, no more clicks, just better, different. better, just conversion. a five, like literally less than five minutes. Mm -hmm. It might take, it's going to take me longer to play around with headlines than it is to copy and paste that headline onto the page and maybe tweak the color or something. I mean, that literally doing that inside of a click funnels is, is, is a, is a 60 second thing. Mm -hmm. hit save and it's done. So yes, I believe we throw the baby out with the bathwater. We, th we absolutely cut our nose off despite our face. We, uh, any and all things that describe us just quitting right before the miracle happens. I mean, really? Uh, and it's a, it's a, it's a very common thing, uh, that we do. I think that's a massive golden nugget. The other thing I took away from your story was, was that um, yes, these 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 business models like affiliate marketing, these business models uh, like like email marketing, even um, which essentially is I mean is is a kind of another way to say affiliate marketing, right? Because you're just collecting emails and and then emailing people offers. Um, they've been around for longer than we've all been on the internet, and they're going to be around for longer than we're all be alive. Mm -hmm. I guarantee it because mm -hmm. it's just a proven business model that even large companies like Airbnb and Uber have, have, uh, uh, you know, have, have adopted just in, in a slightly different way. It's connecting people who are in the market for a product with the company that sells that product and getting a broker's fee, a referral fee, an affiliate commission. It's all the same thing, Right. Getting a referral fee is something that has been around long before the internet. And affiliate marketing is just the digital version of getting a referral fee for making you know, a connection. It, it, it's it's amazing. So I don't know. Like this is this is a this is a new binder I just started, and this is a you know I I am always looking for the next big opportunity because that's what I do. But I'm also smart enough now and have failed enough and have blown up enough businesses that were successful to know, Hey, don't, if this is working, still focus on it. So for example, if we're talking about how I promote legendary marketer, or how I promote click funnels, you think I'm going to turn down, you know, do you think I'm going to blow that business up anymore? Absolutely not. I'm just going to work on making that as efficient as possible. So it hums along. So anyways, the point I'm getting at is so now it's like, okay, cool. What else can we do? on the back end, right? Not change my front end strategy, but what can we offer on the back end to increase the lifetime, you know, value of my leads and stuff like that. But anyways, I'm going through notes and I'm studying all the greats and, you know, making different things. And the, the only thing I have in this big box here, and I know you can't read it, but I'll, I'll read it to you. And, and the reason I put a box out this is this is kind of the key to the, the exponential business, right? If we're thinking, uh, you know, like the success legendary marketer has, if we're thinking the success that Apple has, and what it is, it's the, the key idea here is to put the distribution in the hands of the customers, right? If you can do that, right? Like if it, it, Apple fans are fanatical. So, that, you know, I'm on my MacBook and I have my iPhone, I have my AirPods, you know, and I have all this stuff. And guess what? If someone says, what do you have? I say, I have an Apple, you know what I mean? And, and that's how Apple fans are because so really the, the, the fans of Apple, the, the customers handle a lot of the quote unquote distribution in, 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 the, in the way that they, they've created this community. Well, that's what affiliate marketing is. That physically puts the distribution in the hands of the customers by saying, hey, you like our product? Great. Go recommend it to other people and we're going to pay you a referral fee. So if you're in this affiliate marketing game or you're studying this affiliate marketing game and you're like, boy, this sounds like a passing fad, which it's not, or this sounds like something that I could do for a couple of weeks or a couple of months and then I, I want to do something different. I, I would suggest maybe getting that thought out of your head because affiliate marketing is here to stay. It puts a distribution in the hands of the customers and that's the secret to an exponential business. So it's a good business to be in. And it took me a long time to get comfortable saying I'm an affiliate marketer, but guess what? I'm an affiliate marketer.
Yeah, I mean, it's it'd be silly. I have a pile of checks amongst beyond the digital payouts we get. I don't know where they are. My wife must have picked them up. But, but you know, we get we get multiple checks per, and I'm talking about physical checks still from various affiliate things, whether it's you know products on ClickBank that we're testing and running to be able to teach our students or or whatever. Just if getting checks for referring people. Wouldn't it be nice if we got paid to talk about Apple products? I mean, and, and every time we wore an AirPod, you know, we're in front of a couple of hundred people right now and a couple of thousand or more will uh, minimum we'll see this replay. I mean, wouldn't it be nice if we if we had uh, if we got paid for that? We, we don't. Uh, but um, one other thing that came up in your story for me and you, I knew what you were talking about, but I want to I want to make uh, I want to elaborate from my perspective a little bit in case anybody else didn't know what you were talking about. But um, at least this is what I thought you were talking about, selling people what they want, not what you want for them or not what you are passionate or, or whatever about was a big learning lesson for me back in 2015 ish. I uh, was really, really uh, into kind of uh, a, a sort of a heart centered, I guess that would be one buzzword, a, you know, a, a very, very personal development style business. And I was selling that specifically. My entire audience was all business opportunity seekers, people who were basically proven to buy products to make money online. We're less interested in personal development stuff. Uh, they they would listen to it, but they weren't proven to buy that. So I was trying to sell my audience of business opportunity seekers. People were saying, I want to know how to make money online. And I had already been successful selling them products of how to make money online. And I'm now turning and trying to pivot and sell them all kind of personal development style coaching. And and they didn't they didn't respond to it. They didn't buy it. Right. And I'm sitting around scratching my head going, man, I mean, this this is this is well, I don't understand why they're not responding to this. But it was, it was because I was trying to sell them what I wanted them to buy, what I was interested in at that time, because I was going through a massive growth <coughs> grow spurt and transition in my life and uh, sort of stepping my recovery, my personal development, all that up uh, um another level. And so what was going on in my life, entrepreneurs typically tend to project that onto their yes. audience in their, in their business. Right. And it's a game I like to play with other people in this space. I like see what they're posting on Facebook. I'm like, I know what they're thinking right now. Maybe that's the card player in me, but it's like, yep, I know what, I know what you're going through right now. <laughs> I, I, I know exactly. I know, man. And it's like entrepreneurs, typically online marketers and entrepreneurs, in this space, project what they're going through in their personal life onto their business. And it's not a smart thing to do, you know, being authentic and, and even being, you know, being yourself, being genuine is, is cool. That works. That's a cool, good thing to do. Be as genuine as you can give a shit about people, but, but projecting what you're doing or going through or overcoming or are interested specifically in your personal life onto your audience, who's your audience is proven to be interested in something and they're following you for a specific reason because you started talking about a specific topic. And when you transition to now talking about something different or even promoting something that's different, they, uh, they, it only makes sense that they're like, it's it's confusing to them because if they wanted that they would have got it from somebody else right. initially mm -hmm. so for me that was a big learning lesson because i you know i i sold a few coaching packages and things but you know it was it was just a struggle man it was a struggle and i was like damn i was like i just got done you know, my, I had a company before that, that was a multi, multi hundred million dollar. I mean, we were super successful and here I am. I thought just like you did that. Well, Hey, I mean, they like me, they'll buy right. anything because they're yeah. following me and they trust right. me and all this kind of stuff. But I had a huge reality check and I was like, it is not about me. These, uh, this is not, this is not music man this is not like this is not entertainment like the movies this is 
this is topic related information marketing. And, you know, and even if I was in a country music artist and came out with a rap album, I may lose a lot of my audience. They may be most, scratching their head. Most people wouldn't succeed. It, it, you know, the best way I can, I can put it is, you know, I don't, I don't eat fast food a whole lot, but you know, if I, if I want, you know, a big Mac or whatever, I'm, I'm going to McDonald's. Well, what would happen if McDonald's started, you know, cut their big Mac out and started selling pizza? Would anybody go to them anymore? Heck no. You know what I mean? They'd be done for. And and that's, that's that's the exact same thing that that I think you're talking about. And, um, you know, that's the beauty just to kind of tie it up is, is that's the beauty of affiliate marketing is you don't have to guess. Right. So when I, when I, when people ask me, how do you find products to promote? Because I always start with the product. So when I first started uh, promoting legendary marketer, the first thing I did is like, okay, let's get into the product. Let's learn the product. Let's see if this is something that, that, that we can, we can, we can get behind and we can believe in. And obviously, you know, fast forward, it worked out great. And then I built my campaign around it and stuff like that. But what, you know, what I say is, you know, start with the product because the offer is everything. Um, find stuff that other people are promoting because it's validated. Guess what? Affiliates don't stick around promoting stuff that doesn't convert. Um, and then, you know, from there, uh, you know, make sure that there's enough people in the space seeing success. And if that's the case, hey, guess what? People want that product. Um, now figure out how you're going to promote it with your angle. And I think that's the beauty of affiliate marketing. Like I just said, you don't have to guess, you know, what people want based on what, what's selling. Yeah. Well, brother, uh, man, this has been a masterclass. This is, this has been fantastic, super valuable. Um, and I just can't, if you guys want to meet Brian, I believe you'll be at our mastermind in December. So absolutely uh, looking forward to it. We've already got a uh, we've already got a a packed registration list for that, cool. and um, I'm thinking that if you when we do begin to promote that here in a couple of weeks um, uh, or talk about it, and and I think we may have you back on a on a on a specific live just to kind of talk about that event. Um, if you if you folks can get a seat to that mastermind to be able to meet Brian. I, I would jump on that. I would jump on that. As I said, the registration list is already full, but we're going to call everybody, make sure that they're still coming. And if some of those spots open up, I would recommend that you jump on that if you can. So looking there's something to about that. being in that physical room, if you can, you know, I said, I don't know if there's going to be a room, but you know, like, it, it, there's just something about surrounding yourself with the, with people who are kind of thinking the same thing and doing the things that you want to do. That's super, super For powerful. Sure. For sure. I can't wait to to do it. It's been it's been too long dealing with all this. So, dude, I, I got to jump and I know you have a, a yeah, busy day as well. Things and, to do, right? <laughs> and, and thanks so much for your time, brother. It's always Thank you. a pleasure. Always a Anytime. pleasure. All right, Brian, we'll talk to you later, brother. All right. Sounds great. See you. And thanks, everybody who jumped on. We'll see you soon. All right. Go and follow Brian at Brian Brewer Official on TikTok. He is without a doubt a legend. All right. Without a doubt, that guy is a beast. And uh, and you just heard uh, exactly why I say that. So, my friends, we'll see you back here for another episode tomorrow. Uh, make an investment in yourself today. Do something that 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 scares you a little bit. Do something that that, that makes you step out of your comfort zone and um, and 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 do today what others won't. So you can have tomorrow what others don't. With that said. Peace. I got to run. Get out of here. Shoot. Go. Bye.